This is a step-by-step -step guide for installing a RedArc BCDC1225D. For this video, we will be installing a BCDC1225D into a 200 series Toyota Land Cruiser Sahara. You will need a range of tools including a spanner set, socket set, screwdriver set, side cutters, soldering iron, cable cutters and crimpers. In addition to the BCDC1225D, you'll also need an FK40 fuse kit, some conduit or split tube, heat shrink, electrical tape, terminals, lugs and cable ties. Depending on your battery type and vehicle make, you may need a BCDC mounting bracket, a battery tray and battery terminals. When installing other BCDC models, most of the items required will remain the same, however the fuse kit will change depending on the charger used. Pop the bonnet and remove trim as required. It is recommended to place any clips, screws and bolts into a tray or box out of the way so they are easily located when we refit the trim. Install the battery tray as per the manufacturer's instructions. A battery tray is required to mount the battery securely to the vehicle and will need to be sourced externally before beginning your BCDC install. Once the tray is installed, go ahead and test fit the battery. Pay attention to the battery terminal orientation to ensure good cable routing and that there will be no fouling on the bonnet or other components. If a battery is too tall, there is risk of damage to the battery and the vehicle when the bonnet is closed. Now to test mount the BCDC. If installing without a red arc bracket, find a suitable location for the BCDC. If you are using a red arc BCDC mounting bracket like we are, secure the charger to the mounting bracket and look at where the unit will be mounted. The most important point when installing your BCDC 1225D is that it is mounted as close to the battery that you are charging as possible. We recommend it be mounted within one meter of the auxiliary battery. If the battery you are charging is in the rear of the vehicle, the BCDC should be mounted in the rear of the vehicle also. If the battery you are charging is in a camper trailer or caravan, once again it is best to install the BCDC in the camper trailer or caravan itself. The BCDC is designed to be able to withstand conditions commonly found in a vehicle engine bay, so engine bay installations are acceptable if this is where the auxiliary battery is fitted. The BCDC's electronics are fully sealed to protect against dust and water ingress. It is designed to run at full power up to 55 degrees Celsius. In temperatures between 55 and 80 degrees Celsius, however, performance will be inhibited, so it is recommended to keep the unit away from direct engine heat sources. Our recommended engine bay locations for installing the BCDC include the front of the radiator or behind the headlight assembly. Do not mount the BCDC next to the engine block, exhaust manifold, or near the turbo. Next, assess the best place to mount the fuses. One of the most common modes we see with BCDC installs out in the field is melted fuse holders. It is important to use good quality fuses and fuse holders. A good quality fuse and fuse holder will ensure a good electrical connection between the fuse and the cable on either side. This is why we recommend MIDI fuses. A poor connection means a high resistance and a high resistance means excess heat is generated. Sometimes the heat generated gets to a point where the fuse blows prematurely or the fuse holder gets so hot that it melts and the connection is lost. Sometimes the connection is lost on the inside of the fuse holder and this is not externally visible to the user. Now we are ready to run the cables. Selecting the correct cable size for your input and output wires is very important when installing your BCDC. Specific cable size recommendations can be found in the BCDC user manual. As a guide, it is recommended that both input and output power cables for the BCDC 1225D in an underponnet application such as this one are at least 8 BNS. DC cables should be terminated using only quality connection methods. RedArc recommends Anderson connectors for where disconnection is required or butt splices for permanent connections. The common grounding of the BCDC at the input battery and at the output battery is essential. This ground point gives the BCDC a reference for its input and output voltages, enabling it to correctly sense the point at which it turns on and off. It is important to ensure that the negative terminals of both the input and output battery and the ground wire of the BCDC 
all connect to the same place. This does not mean they all need to connect to the same exact point on the vehicle, however, they do need to make a common electrical connection. The chassis of the vehicle is a good example of a common ground point. It is important to remember to check the continuity of your earth connections once installed. Some dual cab vehicles can have the tray not electrically connected to the cab chassis. This can be an issue when installing the auxiliary battery in the tray, and in this case, the tray may need an extra connection on the underside of it to achieve the electrical connection to the vehicle chassis. It is important that good quality terminals are used to ensure a good connection to the common ground point from the input and output batteries and the BCDC. It's time to join the cables to the BCDC. This can be done in the vehicle or on the bench. You will notice the thin wires on the BCDC. The blue wire is for an ignition source should you be installing in a vehicle with a variable voltage alternator. We can tape that up because this vehicle has a temperature compensating alternator. The orange wire is the charge profile selection wire. Let's talk about what to do with this. To select profile A, the orange wire should be left disconnected and taped back to ensure that this does not touch any other connections. This will give us a maximum charge voltage of 14.6 volts. For profile B, the orange wire should be connected to the common ground for a maximum voltage of 15 volts. For profile C, the orange wire should be connected to the input battery positive for the highest voltage of 15.3 volts. And if you have a lithium battery, you will need to connect the orange and green wires together to select the lithium charge profile. Please refer to the battery manufacturer's specifications of maximum charge voltage, as these settings are only a guide. The maximum charging voltage of each setting can be found in the BCDC user manual. Also, Consider the temperature of the battery installation. If the battery is in the engine bay, the settings should be set to a lower charge profile. For example, a lead acid battery in a hot environment, such as the engine bay, should be set to profile A. This is because the gassing voltage of the battery decreases as the temperature increases. Do not cut the cables to exact length until the BCDC is installed. This allows us wiggle room to route the cable. Now it is time to mount the BCDC. Follow instructions if you are using a BCDC mounting bracket or use the BCDC's mounting holes to secure the unit to the vehicle. The BCDC can be mounted in any orientation. However, it is recommended to mount it so the LEDs can be easily viewed. Neatly route wires to fuses, avoiding sharp edges and moving parts. What about the solar input? This is where we can connect directly to a solar panel or if we are using portable panels, we can fit an Anderson plug. Remember to make an earth cable for the Anderson connection and check the vehicle's earth connection point for continuity as we did before. Now we need to finish the solar input. Crimp Anderson connections and mount the plug somewhere suitable. It is worth thinking about mounting the plug somewhere it can be accessed without opening the bonnet to make life easier when connecting portable solar panels. We need to crimp lugs on the cable and connect to the previously installed MIDI fuses. Remember, the nuts are nylock nuts and they feel tighter than standard nuts when doing them up, so it is important to tighten them all the way down to avoid high resistance connections. These fuses need power, so let's make a couple of fuse positive leads to connect the fuses to the battery terminals. It is important to remember not to overbend or kink the cable, as this will put stress on the crimps and fuse holders. Connect battery positive leads to the fuses and the battery terminals. We discussed common grounds earlier and now it is time to earth the auxiliary battery. Make your battery earth cable, ensuring the cable thickness is suitable to support all auxiliary loads. For example, 6 BNS for small loads such as fridges and LED lights, or 0 BNS for jump starting and inverters. Connect the earth cable from the auxiliary battery to the vehicle. Check the profile LED is flashing on the front of the BCDC. This indicates that the unit is in standby and ready to charge when the vehicle is turned on. Connect your multimeter to the start battery and start the engine. As the voltage rises above 13.2 volts, you will see the BCDC LEDs activate as the BCDC turns on. Note the profile and vehicle LEDs turn on solid, while the stage LED turns on and will either be solid 
or flashing depending on the auxiliary battery state of charge. If you have a current clamp, you can measure the current by clamping over the positive lead from the BCDC to the auxiliary battery positive. The current will vary depending on the state of charge of the auxiliary battery. If the battery is discharged, you will see a high current, like 25 amps for a BCDC 1225D, and if it is nearly charged, the current will be much lower. You are all but done. Now it's time to tidy the wiring and refit all the trims. It's as easy as that. If you ensure your connections are well made and your earth points are sound, and your BCDC is mounted close to the battery it is charging, your auxiliary system will serve you well for years to come.